Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today it's time to have a look at the ground stuff for the suggestions past the developers for January of 2023. As always, if you enjoy this style of content, make sure to like the video and also subscribe to the channel. Let's get into the suggestions past the developers. The first vehicle is the STKFC 138 15cm Schwer's Infanterie Geschutz 33SF Aus Panzerkampfwagen 38T, or as it's known to most people, the Grill, or Cricket for short. It was a series of direct fire capable self propelled artillery vehicles built for the German military in the Second World War. They were built on the chassis of the Czech Panzer 38T, designed to use up surplus chassis and 15cm guns, and provide mobile howitzer support to infantry and armoured columns. The vehicles were constructed in two main varieties, starting in early 1943. The early versions were built on Panzer 38T Aus H chassis, with a rear-mounted engine and a mid-mounted fighting compartment. While the later versions used the Panzer 38T Aus M chassis with a front-mounted engine and a rear-mounted fighting compartment, this later model was referred to as the Grill Aus, Aus K. In addition to the main gun, the vehicle mounted an MG34 7.92mm machine gun for defence against infantry. As a tank, it had a moderately armoured body, but only a lightly armoured superstructure, and the open-topped fighting compartment made the vehicle vulnerable to strafing. 389 grills of the two variants were built, along with 102 vehicles of an ammunition carrier variant, replacing the howitzer and additional 150mm ammunition storage. These vehicles could at least theoretically be easily modified into combat-ready grills by installing a howitzer. The next one is the T90, but not the T90 that you're thinking of. Instead, this was a modification of the T-70 light tank from 1942, which provided the Soviet Army with a purpose-built tank-based SBAA vehicle instead of continuing to rely on converted trucks in the role. Converted trucks often had more difficulty in off-road conditions uh, than tanks and were usually unarmored and therefore very vulnerable to both air strafing and ground attack. The T-70 tank hulls were fitted with a newly designed turret mounting a pair of 12.7mm Dishka machine guns and capable of high aiming angles to provide defence against enemy aircraft. A few of these converted tanks were built, but the programme was cancelled in 1943 in favour of the ZSU-37 SPAA vehicle instead, as it mounted a much more powerful gun and a greater effective range. Japan gets itself a flame tank in the form of the Kaho. This was an experimental flame tank developed by Japan during the Second World War, featuring two hull-mounted flamethrowers and a short 57mm gun. Uh, Japan first started development of flamethrowers themselves in 1918, with various models being in service since 1926. Experiments with flame tanks started in 1930, and these included vehicles like the Soko Sagyo Ki, a multi purpose engineering vehicle that was also equipped with two flamethrowers. In 1937, a modified version of the Type 93 flamethrower was mounted into and tested on two Chiha tanks. These experiments culminated with the development of the Kaho by the Third Army Technical Research Institute with the sole known prototype being built sometime around 1943. Unfortunately, no known records exist of the Kaho's trials. All known photos of the tank were also taken by Americans after the war, and due to Japanese fuel shortages stopping the development of the flamethrowers, it's unlikely the Kaho would have ever been put into production. Another tidbit is that the Kaho is most likely a post-war designation, it's unclear what the actual vehicle's real name was, if it even had one. The vehicle used two flamethrowers mounted on the left and right side of the front hull. These were modified specifically for the use in tanks, and as such had greater performance compared to the handheld Type 93 and 100 flamethrowers. Compared to the Type 100, the mounted flamethrowers had much greater range, 43 meters compared to 20 to 25, wider flames, 5 meters instead of 3, and longer throwing time, 100 seconds instead of 10 to 15. 
The flamethrower's mounts featured a bottom hole for the flamethrowers and a smaller upper hole for vision. The flamethrowers were fed by two large fuel tanks in the rear of the hull via pipes. These fuel tanks also supplied the tank's motor. As the Kaho was based off the Type 97 Chiha tank, it shared many of the same features. These include having the same width, length, suspension, engine, and armor thickness as the base Chiha. The Kaho used the two-man Chiha turret and as such was equipped with a short 57mm Type 97mm tank gun along with two 7.7mm Type 97 machine guns, one as a pintle mount and the other in the turret rear. Being slightly taller to make room for the flamethrowers and their fuel tanks, the Kaho was also slightly heavier, reducing its mobility. The hull shape was also drastically changed, having a flat hull front and rear, as opposed to Jiha's frontal armor bulge and sloped rear. Finally, the hull 7.7mm machine gun was removed. The next vehicle is for China, and it's the Type 70 130mm self-propelled rocket launcher, which the poster believes may also be called the PHZ-70, but the factory code for it was the WZ-303. This belongs to the short-range field rocket weapons of the ground rocket artillery, which is used to wipe out targets within 10 kilometers. The vehicle adopts the chassis of the Type 63 tracked armored personnel carrier, the ZST-63, and also it has access to 90 launch tubes, 10 on the upper and 9 on the lower. The launcher frame has a hydraulic lifting device which is raised 500 millimeters up during launching. Therefore, it can be used for amphibious operations. The vehicle was used as a rocket launching platform during the war in 1979 uh, to counterattack in self-defense against Vietnam, which is one of the ways to put it. Uh, basically, the history of this ma machine is the Soviet Katushka rocket launcher that uh, scared ger the German armies during the Second World War greatly impressed the Chinese military. To meet the operational needs of the army, in February 1970, China decided to develop domestic tracked self-propelled uh, rocket launchers. From March to September of 1970, three prototypes were built, and in November, the design was said to be finalized for production. However, the launcher uh, turned out to be unreliable. Two more prototypes were built in 1972 and 73, and developed and development was continued for several rounds. In October of 1977, the Type 70 rocket launcher eventually finalized the design process, given factory product code WZ303. The production started in 1979. The Type 70 rocket launcher, with the Type 70 1-122mm self-propelled howitzer, constituted armored cavalry mobile firepower assault system for the good old Chinese. The Semavente L3 de 4732 was Italy's first attempt to make a tank destroyer by placing the 47mm 4732 cannon on an armored vehicle. This was designed in 1939 to 40. In this case, the chassis of an L335 tankette was used. The weapon was mounted at the very front of the vehicle and the crew compartment was made open top to accommodate it. Originally, the gun was fully exposed, which led to concern about the vehicle's vulnerability to small arms fire. A gun shield was added to address the issue, and the prototype was completed. At least one prototype, possibly more, was built based on the design, but the vehicle was deemed too small to effectively carry the 47mm cannon, and unfortunately was rejected. The Semavente L40 de 4732, based on the Caro Armato L640 light tank, was selected for production instead. The next vehicle is technically for France, uh, but could also be considered for Germany. This is the Panzer Sparwagen P204F, MIT 5cm KWK 38L60. This was an upgun version of the AMD 35, uh, which basically used the armoured vehicle uh, from France during the Second World War. The Germans liked the AMD 35 as much as the French did, which is why they used a lot of them uh, when they captured France under the Vichy banner. The captured vehicles were usually used without major modification for the occupation of the captured territories, but also on the Eastern Front against the Russians as reconnaissance vehicles. 
Knowing uh, the Allies may land in the mainland Germany at any time, Vichy France uh, decided to equip uh, some of the AMDs with the 50mm Pac 38L60 in order to have the capacity to fight the Allied tanks. But unfortunately, this was for nothing, as the FFI had captured the Panzer Sparwagen P204F MITS 5cm Pac 38L60 and used it against the Germans. In 1944, the Panzer Sparwagen uh, was used by the Besnia Squadron, which was famous to be using captured German material. The Israelis get the M3 half-track with the 90mm on it. Uh, basically, this is the M3 half-track DEFA 90mm. It was an Israeli upgrade of the M3, which was armed with the 57mm gun. Israel, having used the 57mm half-track with huge success in the battle during 1948, had taken back the concept to create a new generation of similar vehicles, which had better armament and also improved design. The development started in 1965 and had the goal to make the SPG with modernized firepower and also a lower profile. To do so, they chose the newly introduced field gun, the 90mm DEFA D921. The gun was used in the IDF as a field gun for the defense side and also on the AML-90, recently acquired from France. The cabin was mostly cut off to allow the gun to be installed with a lower profile. This eliminated the whole machine gun and the machine gunner position. Additionally, smoke launchers were also installed on the side of the chassis. And by 1966, the development was completed and 60 of the SPGs were ordered. They were converted from the existing M3 slash M5 half-tracks in service, and they served until the early 70s, when they were sold away. Many can actually be found in the hand of private collectors today. The final suggestion is for Finland, and it's the CV-9030 Finn. Basically, it starts as one of the first major variants of the CV-9040. It was originally redesigned for Norwegian specifications, as in 1992, Norway began a series of examinations for future infantry fighting vehicles. Other competitors included the Austro-Spanish Ascod, the American M2 Bradley, the German Puma, uh, and the British FV-510 Warrior. Ultimately, the CV-9031 in part because of its excellent performance in the snowy conditions of Norway. One of the primary changes to the CV-9030, or the CV-90 Mark I, was its armament. Instead of a 40mm Bofors, the CV-9030 was armed with a 30mm Bushmaster II autocannon. This was developed from the CV-9025 prototype turret, and the vehicle entered service in 1996. BA Systems AB later created an upgrade of the CV-9030, known as the CV-90 Mark II, which, part which partly digitized the vehicle, raised the rear hull slightly, and added in a health and unit monitoring system and interactive manual and instructions. Four years later, Finland purchased the CV-90 Mark II in a 219 million euro deal, a total of 107 were purchased in two separate orders, the first order of 57 being delivered in 2003, the other was ordered in 2004 for 45 more, and these were delivered in 2006 and 2007. These vehicles, often designated CV-9030 Finn, have been in Finnish service since. The primary feature of the 9030 is its 30mm Bushmaster II autocannon, firing at a rate of fire of around 200 RPM. It offers a few different types of ammunition, including APFSDS, PAB MT, the HEIT uh, as well. The CV9030 Finn itself features night vision for the driver, a digital FCS, laser designator, commander's sight, as well as a thermal imaging channel for the gunner. The IFE retains the protection of the original CV-90, but can be fitted with modular or Mexus armor, though this is not known to be used in Finnish service. In September 2021, it was announced by the Finnish Defence Minister Antti Kekkonen that the Finnish CV-9030 fleet would receive a midlife upgrade, ensuring their capability into the 2030s. As part of the midlife upgrade, the Finnish company Senop was awarded a contract to develop night vision sensors for the CV-90 fleet, with the upgrades being applied in the following years. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and have a great day. See you next time. 
I'd just like to thank Millie Draper, Juan the Panda, Nick R. Kupila, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie B. Young, Peter Grayling, Jerry Provolt, Bereen, Alan Hacker, Sem Arslan, Uncle Bean, Derek R., and Lafouche for supporting the channel.